quality problems with 2020, 2021, and 2022 cars. Don't buy these cars, friends. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We just published a show titled, Don't Buy 2020, 2021, and 2022 Vehicles. But the biggest reason we shared on that video was that those cars are grossly overpriced. This is a follow-up to that show because our viewers asked for more details on the quality concerns we have with those years of vehicles. So that's what we're focusing on here today. Cars produced through mid-2020, all of 2021, and most of 2022, with 2022 showing some of the worst results, including some of the early 2023 releases were rushed through manufacturing plants and quite often with understaffed assembly lines. Parts with upstream suppliers were also a problem, and you'll hear more about that. Naturally, many workers elected to stay home during that time, but that also meant that some of the most skilled workers weren't there when the cars and parts were being built. According to the 2022 U.S. Initial Quality Study, IQS, from J.D. Power in Troy, supply chain issues and personnel dislocations contributed to vehicle problems reaching a record high in the 36-year history of the benchmark study. So three years of concerns with 2022 standing out as the worst year in the 36-year of quality studies by J.D. Power. To go back and wrap up a few details on the 2020 models, if the vehicle arrived at dealers in the fall of 2019 or in early 2020, they're probably okay. You'll just have to do a little legwork to figure out if you're looking at a 2020 model. Sure. The simplest way to determine when a vehicle is built is the fact that every vehicle has a safety compliance certification label or a door jam label and it is located on the driver's side jam. It's not hard to find. Just open the driver's side door and look for a large sticker inside the door jam. Right. The sticker you find there should contain information about your vehicle's production month and year. It's not just our opinion we are sharing about poor quality concerns. Just do a little bit of your own research and your efforts will reveal that there are tons of articles published on the fact that pandemic era vehicles, otherwise known as COVID cars, <laughs> have nearly doubled the quality problems of their predecessors. Wow. If paying a huge premium for those cars doesn't stop you, the quality problems should scare you just a little bit. It's clear that the COVID-19 pandemic took its toll on supply chains and manufacturing, including vehicle dealerships and automaker sales. The J.D. Power U.S. initial quality studies shows that those disruptions caused vehicle quality to plummet. In a moment, Liz is going to cover a statistic that includes a PP100 factor. This is a measurement of overall dependability and is determined by the number of problems per 100 vehicles sold. Yes, PP100. Yes, this isn't parts per thousand we're talking. It's problems per 100 vehicles. Now listen up, friends. The numbers will stagger you. J.D. Power's initial quality study result moved the PP100 needle to an average of 180 problems per 100 vehicles owned across the industry. Wow. You can pretty much say there's a 100% probability that the vehicle you'll buy will have a problem. There's a lot of garbage that got turned out. Quality of cars has become a major pain point in the last few years with many technology and tooling changes facing car manufacturing. Admittedly, combining new and old tech is challenging and doesn't always work so well. When we say quality problems, it's fair to quantify what the problems actually are. All of them present different levels of reliability concerns from the mundane Bluetooth interface issues to dangerous safety concerns. And while 2020 and 2021 weren't good, 2022 was terrible. Researchers are still trying to figure out why so many new cars were at risk of catching on fire or losing <laughs> a wheel or stalling while on the highway in 2022. Catching on fire, losing a wheel, stalling in the middle of the highway. None of those sound like little small mundane problems to me. Right. Also, the National Traffic Safety Administration said automakers have issued no fewer than 300 separate vehicle recalls for safety related issues during 2022, affecting millions of vehicles nationwide. Then rather comically, they said on a bright note out of that high number, well, there was 406 safety related recalls in 2021. That doesn't sound like a bright spot to me. Some of the 2022 recalls include some bizarre issues. Jeep recalled nearly 63,000 Wrangler 4Xs over engine shutdown issues. Can you imagine getting stuck on Highway 90 around Chicago or on the 405 out of LA? You could get killed. You're dang right, you could. Yeah. Audi A6 S6 recalled backseat spills could cut engine power. In what had to be the most unusual recall, Audi's A6 S6 and related model engines 
would suddenly go into limp mode after a rear seat liquid spill. <laughs> no McDonald's or extra Cokes for you kids back there. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Half a million Ford Bronco Sport SUVs recalled over fire risk. The problem relates to a faulty fuel injector and affects 2020 through 2023 Escape and 2021 through 2023 Bronco Sport vehicles with the 1.5 liter three cylinder engine. Bring the hot dogs and buns, I guess. <laughs> Hyundai recalls 53,000 vehicles with dual clutch transmissions. 2021 and 2022 Hyundais have a defect that could cause total loss of power with Elantra N, Kona N, Santa Cruz, Santa Fe, Sonata, and Velister N vehicles involved. A Hyundai dual clutch transmission is essentially two gearboxes controlled by a sophisticated network of computers, electronics, and hydraulics, which allow your Hyundai to shift gears without disrupting the power flow from the engine to the transmission. Well, that's how it's supposed to work, just not in 2022. <laughs> Even 40,000 Tesla Model S and X EVs were recalled over power steering loss. This was the Model S and Model X vehicles, but is being addressed with an over-the-air update. Not sure how I feel about over-the-air updates, Kevin. <clears throat> yeah, to demonstrate that pandemic quality problems weren't isolated to cheaper cars, Lamborghini recalled the new Countach because the glass engine cover would go flying. <laughs> Nine U.S. <laughs> examples were impacted by a faulty glass bonding method. So to all of our Lamborghini followers out there, watch your glass engine covers. Back in a moment after this message from our very own Mary Jo. Hello, I am Mary Jo from the Homework Guide team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out carefully researched for accuracy, and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications of upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on our ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? There were many more recalls to mention, but the thing all of these recalls had in common, they could threaten the safety and well-being of the vehicle occupants. Among the major makes, Ford leads the bottom quality problem dwellers with 67 separate recall campaigns affecting a whopping 8,636,265 vehicles. Wow. Is that just everything they made? It sounds like it. These included around 250,000 F-250 and F-350 Super Duty pickup trucks for, for fractured drive shafts. Can you imagine towing a trailer load of horses and suddenly your drive shaft explodes? Crazy. Mm -hmm. And then... Ford had about 350,000 Bronco and Escape SUVs for oil leaks that could start fires. Pretty scary stuff there. Totally. Recalls are a big deal because they only happen when vehicle owners, regulators, or the manufacturer determine that a faulty component presents a big enough safety risk that it has to come off the road. Of course, there's the occasional mundane issue like a Bluetooth problem or needing new pages in the owner's manual, but the most common reasons for recalls include safety belts, brakes, electrical components or wiring problems, tires, door latches, fuel pumps, and ignition switches. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be driving a vehicle with any of these problems. No, not at all. In general, initial quality has shown steady improvement throughout the history of the JD Power initial quality study, so the decline these past few years was disappointing, yet understandable given staffing shortages not just at the automakers but also at the part makers sure. it's an upstream problem too like fracturing drive shafts isn't ford itself it's their suppliers that doesn't make me feel any more comfortable that's for sure no friends do not forget that i've booked out tons of these cars from the last three years around the country all 50 states and they are grossly overpriced so not only do you get whacked with premium prices often in the tens of thousands of dollars but you get cars built during a very tough time for the automaker for both reasons, we suggest taking a pass on the last three years of cars. Automakers continue to launch vehicles that are more and more technologically complex in an era in which there has been many shortages of critical components to support them. That's a combination that can turn deadly. I hope you take what we've said today very seriously. If you'd like to show THG some love for producing quality car market updates and honest car bang advice videos like this one, the links for making a tip appearing on the screen will be easy to find in the description box down below. There's also the super thanks button down below the video too. If a tip isn't an option for you right now, no problem. Don't feel bad. Just show us some love by recommending our videos to your friends and family. We thank you very much for that. 
I also want to remind our viewers we'll provide free black book values for a vehicle you're shopping for or a vehicle you'd like to trade in. You can text us at 701-441-3399 or email kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com and you'll get an auto response with a roadmap to a successful car deal. If you're out locking the car lots right now, make sure you see Kevin's playlist, THG's Savvy Car Buyer's Homework Cram Session. Join the thousands of people who've already done that. And if you happen to be on Facebook, drop by and give us a like and a follow. And don't forget to visit our website too, thehomeworkguy.com. We've loaded it up with free resources for car buyers, and we now offer a blog post too. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, as Mary Jo said, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.